Symbiotic relationships are close relationships that exist between two or more organisms. There are three types of symbiotic relationships that we need to know about. One of them is called mutualism, another is called commensalism, and then there is parasitism. These are kind of big words, and remembering the difference between their definitions can be a little confusing sometimes. So let's take a look at each one and see if we can come up with some ways to help us remember the difference between these three types of symbiotic relationships. The first relationship we're going to look at is mutualism. And in the word mutualism, we see the smaller word mutual. And mutual means something that's shared, something that's in common between two people or two organisms. For example, two people have mutual respect for each other. That means that each one has respect for the other, something they share in common. So with mutualism, there is something being shared between the different organisms. And what's being shared is that they both benefit from the relationship. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. This is a picture of one of my favorite examples of mutualism. This is a picture of lichen. Lichen kind of looks like a plant. If you look here, you can see little branches, and it does look a lot like a plant. But it's actually two separate organisms living together in a mutualistic relationship. The things that look like branches are actually part of a fungus. A fungus cannot make its own food. It's not a plant. But living within this fungus is algae, which is a plant, which can make its own food through photosynthesis. So, the algae benefits by having a structure on which to live. The fungus benefits because the algae produces food for the fungus to eat. This is a great example of mutualism. Let's take a look at another. This may look like a picture of a shark about to eat a little fish, but that's actually not what's going on at all. This is another example of mutualism. The mutualistic relationship is between this shark called a lemon shark and the smaller fish called a remora. The lemon shark is allowing the remora to go into its mouth so that it can eat harmful parasites. Both organisms benefit the shark because he gets parasites removed from his mouth and the remora gets a free meal without having to worry about being eaten by the shark. Here's something to help you remember the definition of mutualism. In mutualism, both organisms benefit. So when we draw our M, Let's turn it into two people shaking hands. When two people agree on something, they shake hands on it. This is a relationship in which they both benefit. They're both smiling and shaking hands on the deal. The next type of relationship is called commensalism. In commensalism, one organism benefits. The other organism does not benefit, but it's also not harmed. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. This is a picture of an elf owl living inside of a cactus. The owl benefits from the relationship because the cactus provides shelter from the weather, a safe place for the owl to go to get away from predators, and a safe place for it to raise its young. The cactus, however, doesn't benefit at all, but it's also not hurt. The owl did not dig this hole into this cactus. It simply moved in once the hole became available. The owl benefits. The cactus is neither harmed nor benefits. Here's a way to help you remember the definition of commensalism. When you think of commensalism, think of a bird's nest in a tree. And let's draw a couple of baby birds in here. They're hungry baby birds waiting on mommy to come back. In this relationship, the birds benefit. They have a safe place to raise their young. They're protected from the weather and from predators. But the tree itself does not benefit from this relationship. But it's not hurt by it either. So in commensalism, one organism benefits. The other doesn't benefit, but it's also not harmed. The last type of symbiotic relationship that we need to know is parasitism. And in parasitism, one organism benefits, but the other one is harmed in some way. And if you look at the word parasitism, it almost has the complete word parasite in it. Let's take a look at a couple of examples of parasitism. 
Fleas and ticks are common parasites that we find on our pets. In that relationship, the flea and the tick both benefit because they feed off of our pet. The pet, however, does not benefit and in fact it is harmed by the flea and the tick. Two other examples of parasites are leeches, which will attach themselves to organisms that enter into the water where they live, and then there are hookworms, which will actually burrow into your skin and live inside of human beings. The way to help you remember the definition of parasitism was actually inspired by that picture of the hookworm. So when you draw your pea, make it nice and big, and then turn it into something that looks like that hookworm, something that looks mean. And it'll help you remember that in parasitism, one organism benefits, but the other is harmed.